Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Well, because you said happily self-employed, and I just brought up the photograph. Yeah, and it's the it's the laptop photo. <laughs> okay, the, well, the photo I have. Let me describe it. It's you sitting uh-huh. uh, at a breakfast table. Okay, so it's at a breakfast table. It's sunny behind you. Yeah, it's on yeah. a beach. There are a whole row of parasols, and like, it's like one after the other. Uh-huh. These sort of like cots, day beds on the beach. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This kind of it's very yellowish. The sky is blue. The, the 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 decor of the tables is like this aqua slash green, you know. Yeah. You're in jeans, but a kind of a light blue polo shirt. Sla- slacks, actually. Slacks. Sorry, slacks. So my, so my travel slacks. <laughs> Your travel slacks. They're so nice. Yeah. My dad was in the Shimata business. He made pants. <laughs> I can say slacks. Okay, fine. <laughs> You've got this glorious plate of fruit. Like, mm-hmm. dude, are we having problems with roughage? Boy, that's a lot of fiber. That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, you're looking nicely at the at the photographer. The smile is nice. So what's uh-huh. this photo? So this, this place is the private beach of Andrea Bocelli, the blind Italian singer. Oh, wow. It's in Forti de Marmi in Italy on the, you know, it's in Tuscany on the, on the west coast of Italy. And um, I, I'm having a business meeting with my, my very important and very beloved client. What it was is I was sailing in Sardinia with some friends. And I noticed that my client was in Forti de Marmi. And I was um, planning to go to Rome afterwards, which I did. And I said, well, why don't I come up and, and we'll talk about this. I, I, I'm a ghostwriter, basically, hmm. and we wrote a, a, a best-selling book together. I'm not going to say what it is now because I'm a ghostwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wrote a book together, which is a Wall Street Journal and a USA Today bestseller. Oh, wow. We had the sales. Yeah, you know, we had the sales to be on the New York Times bestseller list, which is really the holy, holy grail yes. of, of books. I mean, I think the sales were like fifty or 60000 It wasn't a blockbuster hit. Still. But it was – it was quite, you know, for a first book yeah. for both of us, by the way. He had never authored a book and I had never ghostwritten a book before. Wow. Um, so that's that's quite a successful outcome. Um, but we weren't on the New York Times list, as it was explained to me, because they didn't produce one that week. Oh. Every once in a very, very blue moon, very, very seldom, they just don't do one for whatever reason. Maybe the key editors are on vacation or or whatever so we had the numbers for it mm-hmm. but we just got we just bad luck really oh, shame. Wow. um but fear not we're working on number two now aaron so. I did, okay <laughs> did you know that i've ghost written a bunch of books i had no idea yeah no i have so we you know we have that overlap that's interesting okay what's your genre or what kind of books uh do you, do you write? it's been uh, non-fiction non-fiction mm-hmm. books so uh, and, not within the business, within the, the um, yeah, within the business management sort of field. I didn't even know you were a writer at all. I mean, and English is not, is not your first language. Or did you learn English and Hebrew? How dare something? you, sir? So I was born in Jerusalem. From the age uh-huh. of uh, one, I grew up in Montreal. Uh, so, ah, okay. So, okay. Uh, you know, I, I speak English with a French accent sometimes when I'm uh, a little bit fucked okay. up, but, uh, okay. no, 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 but I'm basically so, trying so all the boy. time. Then. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, you know, <laughs> okay. But back to this photo, uh-huh. holy, holy shit. Like, so th- there's nobody else in the view. Like it's only you. And there's like, it's like one of those, no, like, no, so actually there's, there's one person and it's lying down, but, but actually uh, right across from us, we didn't, we didn't really understand this until later. There was this kind of older, funny looking Italian gentleman that people kept kind of coming up to and talking to. And he seemed to be somebody important. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we didn't know what I was, but we looked it up later. He was some kind of famous Italian comedian. Oh. Um, who apparently it was some scandal, or, you know, surrounding him that he had had sort of fallen on the wrong side of the Me Too movement. He'd done something untoward or something grotesque, or I, I don't mm-hmm. remember what it was. There was some kind of a a cloud over his head, but um, he was still quite famous and quite recognized by Italian people. Wow. 
but but there's another there's another aspect of this photo. I mean, he, this is the day we we launched. We we solidified the concept for the second book. There's there's a lot of stories attached to this. If we have time, how long ago was this photo? It was last summer. It was almost exactly one year ago. Oh wow! Okay, okay, and okay. So yeah. invariably, when people share, you know, I tell them pick four photos that's going to curate our conversation. Okay. Now, maybe it's explicit in your head, maybe it's not, but why did you choose this photo to start? Hmm. Great question. Um, I, I did give quite some thought to the photos because, you know, I'm a storyteller mm -hmm. and, and, and story, or photos that have stories attached to them, you know, obviously it's more important to me than the quality of the photo or you know, the artistry. But it's a um, beautiful photo. Whoever photographed it knows how to photograph. The composition's great. The lighting's great. <laughs> your expression's great. Oh. It's great. Uh, well, I'll tell my client that. <laughs> or maybe it was, yeah, it was my, it was my client because we, we have a photo of us together nice. that was taken by the waitress, but he took this one. I mean, look, it's hard to take a bad photo in Tuscany. Um, <laughs> I, so, so, I, so I was in, I was in Rome and we agreed to meet in Tuscany. He takes his family there every summer. And, uh, you know, he's very successful. He's, he's a, a fund manager, an investor, and just a very, very intelligent guy and very capable guy. He started as a peasant in some tiny little mining town in Russia. You know, he says, his joke is that uh, people say, oh, you know, is that in the, that sounds like that's in the middle of nowhere. And he says, oh, no, it's much further than that. <laughs> the, mi the middle of nowhere. Wow. That's, 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 that's the big that's, time. That's still close. Well, you know, since you're in Israel, uh, uh -huh. the, the, the phrase in Israel is, you know, go to the end of the world and turn left. Right. So yes. kind of yes. like that. Something like nice. that. Very similar. So, um, so I found out he was in this Forte de Marmi and I was in Rome. So I went to Pisa. I spent a night in Pisa and then I rented a Vespa mm -hmm. and I drove, it's like an maybe an hour drive up to Forti de Marmi on, on a, on a scooter. Nice. It's like 150 cc's or 200 cc's. It's a really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a glorified moped. It's fun. But it was enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Especially in Italy. I mean, being on a Vespa, they give you a helmet with the Italian flag colors. Ciao. And, Ciao. You know, and, and I'm wearing slacks. Don't forget I'm wearing slacks. So, so the, the, I mean, we'll get into this more uh, about my travel life, my nomad mm -hmm. life. But, I mean, the nomad life can get, it can get exhausting after a while. And, and you know, the magic that I felt when I first started this life um, has faded. Okay. And, and oftentimes I'm just tired of traveling and, you know, I long for home. But this was a day when all the magic came back. I'm driving north alone on this Vespa, you know, mm. going to see one of my favorite people in the world. Oh. You know, somebody that I, that I made a baby with, basically, you know, as a, mm -hmm. a nonfiction writer yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. you understand a tremendous amount of research and validation and, and um, writing footnotes and and rewriting and, mm -hmm. and, and having readers and editing. I mean, just to create a, a, a serious book, it's a massive, massive undertaking. And I wrote most of it with him during Corona. So wow. it was really like, it was really kind of an emotional wow, wow. creation as well. So here, here I am going to see him, but it was a beautiful day and the Tuscan mountains are in the background and the wind is blowing through my, well, my hair was under the helmet, but it's blowing mm -hmm. on my face. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a moment. And I'd just come from this beautiful sailing trip with old friends in Sardinia. And then I'd run into this friend from Australia by coincidence mm. um, in Rome. That's a whole nother wow. great story. And that gets into my favorite subject of coincidence. Well, we're either going to talk about that during this conversation or after. Okay. So coincidence is, is where I hang my hat. Nice. So, but in this case, I, was, I just, all the, the beauty and magic of travel came back to me on this day. And, and I was just very, very grateful for the ability to travel, for the, the lifestyle that my work and, a, a, has afforded me. You know, and I'm going up to go see this client that I haven't seen since the book came out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I probably only met him two or three times in person. Oh, wow. So okay. it was a reunion. It was like a celebration of of this baby that we created together and on a beautiful day and in Italy, no less. So I was just very, very happy that day. 
And uh, it, it, I think it shows in the photo how carefree and, and joyous uh, of a day it was. Absolutely. And because you just took a sip of your coffee and you said how joyous it was and you have a massive plate of fruit in front of your face, we're going to go on to the next photo. Okay. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.